Hello, my name is Arthur. In the last video, we got this application to the point that we now have our first text field tab. Um, we have all the menu buttons in place and they don't do anything and none of the buttons do anything. We started off this little series with an application with less buttons, um, but the ability to add tabs and remove tabs. So that's our destination here. We're going to get there in this video. And then after that, I'm not sure what I'll do for videos. It's like I don't get a big response to my videos, so I don't know how if I'll do much more on this topic. So I've emptied out the two um, the two button click functions. So they used to print something. So those are now empty. We have add tab. Now, if we're going to call add tab on the click of a button, um, this function needs to be underneath this function, or we have to start declaring all of our functions. So. I find the easiest thing to do is to have when a function makes a call to another function it should be beneath that function so we'll just cut this out of here we'll put it underneath here that way when it compiles um, this function will know what add tab means because it reads it from the top to the bottom so for this function to call add tab, it's best if it's underneath the function it's calling. So that's the first thing we'll deal with is we'll deal with adding a tab. Now, um, I think that we already used string compare once here. Yeah. And I mentioned that for this to work, we have to have included string h that's part of that library so we're going to use that to determine what button was pressed so on button clicked we need to make the g pointer data useful because in its current state we just can't compare it against the word new to know that's what button was pressed so let's get our tabs to two because I've restarted this software since the last video so what we'll do is we'll declare a variable we'll call it button and that would be a pointer it will equal bracket char pointer close that bracket data semicolon now we can compare button against um, a string word so we'll go if string compare button we'll compare that to the word new which is the label that got passed in the gpointer data and if that is equal to zero the value that would be returned from string compare if they match we'll add a new tab so we'll add tab we have to give it a name and we don't have any naming system in place so we're just going to we'll call it new tab so the first tab is called untitled the second tab is called new so now we have two distinctive tabs we'll also type inside of the tabs to make them more distinctive to be able to confirm or able to delete the right tab so let's save and compile this to make sure that's working. We'll close this one down. Get our terminal. Compile, that should be no problem. And 
and we'll see if we can add a tab so we have a new tab but we can't delete them yet we'll check from the other button that also adds a tab so now both of the new buttons work to add a tab so that's the first part now the second part is the trick it's to um, get the signal to pass something up to close tab that we can use to identify what page we're closing so in order to do that we have to actually move where this signal is at so we're gonna move this so we can attach something important to it so we're gonna cut that out let's move it right down until after the notebook page has been made and um, we'll just bring that back a tab so it's in the right place and let's bring this line down so what we're going to pass as the G pointer data is the scroll window so we'll just put scroll window into here now we're passing a pointer to one of the children of the notebook of the page so the scroll window is a direct child of the page and we're going to use that child to identify what page that the button we just clicked belonged to so how we do that is we need a page number so we're going to go integer int page number page num is equal to gdk notebook page num num and <laughs> get that done right notebook oh we have to go gdk notebook notebook comma data so what this function does is it's going to look for data which is a pointer to the scroll scroll window and it's looking for which page it is a child of and we'll return the number of that page so then from there we can go gdk notebook remove page gdk notebook notebook comma page num and that should let us identify the page number for the button that was pressed Let's deal with this typo. Look across this, see if we have any more typos. It would be nice to do a whole four lines of code and not end up um, having to debug it because of all the typos. So that should be working. Um, let's see if it compiles. and we do have a typo there we have a gdk notebook <laughs> let's make that into a notebook instead of a notebook well there goes the getting past four lines of code idea oh well
when you got those fumble mixed thumbs on the keyboard that's the way that life plays out so now we can add some new tabs in and let's go first second and third so we'll go back we'll put the untitled one on top these all have the same names so let's close the second tab and then we'll check the other two tabs we have first and we have third so let's close third that should be obvious we have first left we can close untitled leaving us with first so that gives us the ability to choose um to close the proper tabs and that took me a little bit to figure out i was trying to use um the button as the child to find the page but that didn't work at all so i had to dig around to figure out that i could actually pass the scroll window as as the g pointer and yeah, some of this stuff, it's just not obvious in the documentation, and it takes a little bit of pounding away at it to figure out what exactly is going to work. <clears throat> so, that's pretty much what I have um, figured out so far. I could leave off with one suggestion on this particular structure uh, of data and the idea of getting different kinds of buttons working and how a person might go about that so inside of a struct we can make a struct as a member and one thing that we could do is we could use string compare as a method to discern between different types of buttons so if we were to declare to define a struct for um well maybe this should actually be menu items because thinking of them of as buttons is probably wrong because they're menu items in the first struct and these are sub menu items and yeah they're buttons in in a sense but maybe the naming isn't very good there so if we defined another struct called um, like submenu to go with this menu struct, which I called button, but maybe that wasn't the best name, we could make that struct have two members, a label and a button type, which would also be a char. So we could have like normal and um, check for a check button which is what we have here these are check buttons and they act like toggle buttons so the check button is very slim on documentation in the GDK documentation but it refers you to toggle buttons and um, then we would um, have to restructure the data like the data would have to be restructured and there'd be a whole bunch of curly brackets around things so we would have new and it's button type and then brackets and then open it's button type and brackets um that would apply for different menu items i kind of picked the menu items that i did on purpose so i don't have all of these different view options like word wrap but that would be something that, well, I might want to put in or make the toolbar come and go with the use of different kinds of buttons. So I thought that was worth mentioning. Um, I went with more straightforward because the idea here was more beginner and doing something tangled like that, I could figure it out, but putting it into, into a clear explanation in the video 
Um, that's not always the same story as being able to figure something out. Um, yeah, one example of that would be um, where my desire to make this is coming from because I've been working with uh, TextView for a little while now and been making, um, I have one application that's getting pretty close to being uh, reasonably able to highlight. So do syntax highlighting for um, C, only for the language C, where this one, it can do a whole bunch of languages. But I've been working on C because that's what I'm trying to learn. So if I can, if I learn how to do syntax highlighting and a bunch of the rules to go with the syntax highlighting, then I'm learning a lot about C by doing it. So yeah, that would be in another example. Like that's something that I've almost got working, but it's probably not something that I could do a video on as easily as I could do a video on this because this is a little more a little more easier so that's it for now I might do some more videos maybe if I get some response to these ones and yeah but I'm not really sure um, I'm gonna press forward and try to get my buttons doing some things learn how to open a file and save a file and some of those types of things um yeah hopefully this was helpful and got somebody else to start on on a GUI where they can do do the same thing and actually have some functioning buttons to start building off of and doing something with so hopefully it was useful and um, until the next video take care